you know, that's that's family, you know. So it's just not about yourself. It's, it's always about the team, but to plan for someone, like like you, you know, someone you call family, it's, it's, it's huge, it's everything, so. AJ, you're a fascinating follow on Twitter. You're, you're an intriguing person. I want to just dig a little deeper into this, but we're going to look ahead to week two. You have the home opener in Philadelphia. It's a Monday night primetime game against a very good Minnesota Vikings team. You're going to be sharing the stage mm -hmm. with Justin Jefferson. You guys led all wide receivers in yardage mm -hmm. in week one. What kind of guy are you when you face a, a wide receiver like Justin Jefferson? Do you watch and appreciate, or do you get real competitive and remain aware of the numbers and say, I'm going to beat this guy in week two? Uh, most definitely, whenever I'm going against uh, another really good wide out, uh, I'm definitely watching. I'm standing up on the sideline watching this game. Um, passed off to Justin Jefferson last week. It looks like he was just running routes on there, to be honest. Uh, hopefully, we can, like, slow him down this week. Um, but, of course, you know, of course I want to um, compete and, you know, try to have a bigger day, you know. Uh, soon, he, soon he'll be one of the highest paid receivers ever to play this game, man. He's a special talent, and I know we got our hands cut out. Hands full, we're, we're trying to stop them, so. It looks us everything, but at the end of the day, like, I have the, you know, I have the say of who's who's up on game day and what we and what we need. He's not sitting in there game planning with us either and to the point where he's, you know, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know exactly, I'll tell him, um, hey, we're going to be in 13 personnel a lot. Like, we discuss everything. It's a, that the best teams I've been on have a great relationship between the head coach and the GM. The crappiest teams I've been on had a bad relationship between the head coach and the GM, and and so, of course, we talk through everything. Um, but at the end of the day, you know how he's going to say, oh, "Oh, you need those three tight ends up because this the plan calls for it this week." Yeah, yeah no, no doubt. Like that's that's kind of. Today, today I will be talking AJ Brown. You want to have a big day and compete with Justin Jefferson. Nick Sirianni clears the air. And Rager want revenge? Let's talk about it, man. This is Alcabea the Analyst. Let's get into it. Um, AJ Brown. AJ Brown was on Good Morning Football, I believe, yesterday. And he was talking about something that went very underrated. It's like they mentioned something about Justin Jefferson, you know. He's like, look, I seen the day he had, I seen the day I had, and um, it's all about slowing him down as far as on the defensive side, but he want to have a bigger day. This remind me of when it was T.O. versus Randy Moss. The Eagles and the Vikings got a sneaky rivalry. Like, it's not too big, but we not the biggest fans of each other. We, we hate each other, and what spiked it up is what we did to them in the playoffs, but we ain't like each other for a very long time. I want to smoke these boys. And A.J. Brown's looking to have a big day. I believe A.J. Brown think, think and know he's better than Justin Jefferson. But he need the defense to show up. Like, he kept emphasizing, like, we got to slow him down because, look, man, I, I know he don't want to say anything about it because he's an Eagles player. But the defense was bad. I mean... Amon St. Brown could have had a day. They let Swift have a day. But Jared Goff's just trash. He's just trash. So Amon St. Brown couldn't have that day. But the defense, man, I don't know. I seen Hassan Reddit leave a couple guys open. It's just drops and missed throws. Um, but Kirk Cousins going to make you pay if those things happen. But all in all, I'm happy to hear... A.J. Brown take that stance like, you know, I, I want the bigger day. I, I want the bigger day. Um, I want to talk about Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni, you know, he had to clear the air because Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon can't, can't do it on and off the field. So Jonathan Gannon yesterday speak to the press, and it sounded like Howie Roseman is a part of the game plan. Like, come on. Why would you do that? You know the media is going to eat that alive. Jonathan Gannon has been so much of a liability on on the field and off the field. Talking to the media, doing what he's doing as far as play calling. Look, man, that, that wasn't 
good to hear. I didn't even want to talk about it. I didn't even talk about it yesterday because I'm like, I know everybody else going to talk about it. So I'm going to try to pick something different to talk about. And it's like, dude, you, you don't answer the media like that. You can say like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know what you should have said, but the moment you mentioned how we rose my name and game planning at the same time, bad enough we have a speculation that he's calling the shots, that's a bad idea. Now, if Nick Sirianni saying it's true that, yeah, we go to him like we're trying to get this guy up from the practice squad or drop this guy down. He, he used a good example. Like, we brought down Grant Katerra. We brought, we brought up Noah, Noah T. I'm going to call him that, Noah T, the tight end position. But that's all how we do. Like, we have a great relationship with him. We tell him things here and there, but he does not have the final say for his game planning. And that was a very good answer by Nick Sirianni. It was actually a breath of fresh air. But once again, Nick Sirianni has to clean up what Jonathan Gannon is doing. Jonathan Gannon, man, this, this dude, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing, man. And um, lastly, and lastly, making this video short and sweet, and I might go on a tyrant on this one, but Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager is talking. He's talking this talk, right? He want revenge, right? Revenge for what? Revenge for what? You want revenge for the Eagles drafting a better wide receiver and Devontae Smith than you? And we pick you over Justin Jefferson because they had higher hopes for you? Oh, you want revenge because the Eagles gave you a lot of opportunities. You kind of capitalized. You was horrible with the media, didn't do anything for the city. What do you want revenge for? What do you want revenge for? Because it don't make sense. Like, we got rid of you, bro. Quez Watkins was better. Hell, I think Johnny Hightower was better than you. Did not bring it. Did not have the attitude. Did not have the work ethic. Came to, what, training camp overweight multiple times. I get it. Personal stuff is happening in your life. I get it. I definitely do. But, bro, you're still a professional. Everybody has a story, bro. Everybody. But when you go into work, got to be professional. Got to be prepared. Bro, you was not prepared. You drop, you, you drop a game-winning pass against the Giants, and you say, it was just a drop. Come on, bro. Come on. At least be trash and be tough with the media. If you trash, at least say all the right thing to the media. You was trash with the media. You was trash on the field. Come on. Your numbers were declining. They was going to decline again. Went from 346 to 299. And you was probably going to have 200. It's probably barely going to see the field. Oh, you mad we got A.J. Brown? I remember that you deleted everything after we got A.J. Brown. I remember that. Because you knew you was not seeing in the f You was not going to see the field. Let me turn on the light a little bit. You knew you was not going to see the field. You're not seeing the field with the Minnesota Vikings. You all hyped on the sidelines. Kissing, kissing up to Justin Jefferson. Probably don't even like you because he wanted to be an eagle. He like, this dude was on the team I was supposed to be on. He didn't even take advantage of it. Now I'm stuck with these booty Minnesota Vikings because of this dude, Jalen Rager. All right, come on. Come on, fam. What are you talking about, revenge? Revenge. Revenge? Come on. Come on, bro. You know, I, I don't know if you used the right words or not. But you're going to return the punt for five yards? That's what you're going to do? You're going to drop some passes and call it just a drop with the Minnesota Vikings? Come on, fam. Come on. Revenge. Revenge. Like he came off a season eight, eight 900 yards, then we just traded him. Bro, you were declining. Going into year three. Not year 15, not year 16. He was declining in year three. 
That's crazy. I'm talking about. Ooh, I knew I was going to go on a rant on that one, man. I knew I was going to go on a rant because this dude, nah, nah, ain't it. He ain't it. I can't, I, I can't wait till Monday. It's my first time in history that Monday wasn't an off day at work, and I can't wait for Monday. I can't wait to play the booty Minnesota Vikings who took advantage of a, a bad Green Bay Packers team. They dropping passes. Aaron Rodgers putting everything on the money. I'm telling you, man, the Green Bay Packers beat they self more than the Vikings beat them. Of course, Justin Jefferson had a day. I give him that. Can't explain the drop passes and stuff like that. Aaron Rodgers literally had nothing to work with. Maybe they developed during the season, but he had nothing to work with. That's the reason why they won that game. But hey, man, what do you think and how do you feel, man, about this game that's coming up? Rager want revenge. This is a storyline for real, for real. Justin Jefferson probably want revenge because us picking that sorry dude over him. Nick Sirianni clears up the air. AJ Brown want to compete. But this is Alcabea, the analyst. Ghost. Hey. Don't know. Mm. This is my mess. 